Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fish Door County TV. Well, it's hard to believe, but it's December already. The boat docks are all in, the launches are empty, and for most of us, we've put our boats away for the year, and we're kind of in that transition period between the end of the open water season and the beginning of the ice fishing season. So as we wait for that good ice to come in, we're gonna take a look back at some of our open water shows from this year and pull out some of our top tips to show you this week. Everything from lure selection for nighttime walleyes to finding walleyes on the lower bay, and even some tips and techniques for targeting largemouth bass in the Door County area. Stay tuned, guys. We've got a great show coming up. We'll be back in just about one minute. I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, the amount of wall largemouths that are up here, the quality of some of them, and I mean, you probably know it better than most people. And uh, you know, you've targeted these fish before, correct? Yeah, I have. Um, certainly not during a tournament, but uh, there's some quality fish up here, and actually in good numbers. Um, they're a lot easier to catch um, and locate earlier in the year when they're when <laughs> <laughs> I saw that little guy. Looks like we got a, ourselves a little population of rock bass here. Yep, that's okay. Little little action. Um, but the largemouth are a lot easier to locate in the spring in that when they're, when they're in some of these cuts and, and up a little bit shallow. Um, but it's certainly fun when, uh, you know, you're up here and trying to enjoy the day and maybe it gets a little windy or something. It just gives the person another little thing to come in and try and, and uh, spend some time maybe with a kid. And oh, absolutely. I mean, these are the key classic areas for that because, like you said, it's protected. You don't have any wind issues, it's safe. No matter what kind of boat you have, you can come in here with a little boat. You don't need a big boat. We got a big, beautiful Triton here, but you don't need a big boat to come in here and fish with. You know, you come in here with a little boat, a little pontoon even, and you know, if you want to rent a boat when you're up here in Door County sometime, and this is a great spot to come try. Absolutely. One of the techniques we're using today here is just a simple pitch. You pick, you lift the rod tip up, kind of let your line pendulum out, let it hit the bottom. Um, it's not a, a technique that a person would necessarily use up in Door County for smallmouth, but uh, for largemouth around the country, it's pretty standard fare. Um, again, cast it out, let it drop vertical, hit the bottom, let, watch your line go slack, and then kind of just lift the bait up a couple of times. And, and you have to really feel the fish and, and see, what, uh, see what they like. Sometimes they want it aggressive and hopped, and, and other times they just want it um, to fall real slow and sit there, and then they'll come and pick it up. So a little Door County largemouth. Looks like you got a little wound on them there. Most people don't realize it. There's a lot of these two, three pounders in here. Sometimes you can come into contact with the fours. Uh, I've seen a few fives, caught a few fives. Uh, but usually that's uh, more towards the spring when you can catch them up shallow. But it's a beautiful fish. Door County largemouth. You know, this time of the year, guys, when you're targeting these big pike or walleyes or anything in these deeper areas, where you're trolling and where you're positioning your boat is one of the key aspects of catching fish successfully and consistently, especially. 
You know, today we're targeting fish that are in a trough or in this big trench here. And there's a couple different ways we try to approach these fish. And it'll apply to the area that we're fishing today in the Sturgeon Bay area, or whether you're fishing up in northern Door County along the edges of some of the shorelines up to the north or the reefs offshore ways. There's two ways we look at it. You want to target fish that are on the edges of that structure or target fish that are on that deeper flat just off the edge. And when we're trolling these edges, as we've said before, we really like to use lead core lines so we know the baits are perfectly set near the bottom and we can control where they're at along the break line. Trolling along that edge, first or second main break in these deep trenches or those steep shorelines is usually the key to catching these big fish during this late summer into fall period. If you're not having success there, the second thing that we'll look at is moving off onto the deeper flat. And we usually move just a few hundred yards maybe away from that main edge, troll the deeper water, and we'll focus in on fish that are suspended into that deep flat. And when you're targeting those fish that are out on those deeper flats off the edges, that's when we really like to utilize our offshore planer boards. We'll set two or three boards on the side, so suspended baits off on the outside boards and then gradually deeper as we get closer to the boat and then of course we'll still keep our lead core lines to target those fish that are relating directly to the bottom. If you concentrate this time of the year in the fall, late fall, late summer period, if you concentrate on those edges and if you don't find them there move off to the deeper flats, utilize your lead core lines, utilize your offshore planer boards, you're going to put a lot of big fish in the boat this late season fishing. Got another one on here, guys. And this one came off the lead core. And you know, we've talked about lead core lots, and we'll probably talk about a lot more this fall uh, because we really like trolling lead core, and this is an example of why. You know, we've talked on other segments and shows we've done about lead core and the effectiveness of it. And situations like we're trolling today for these pike, where we're trolling break lines, um, edges of edges of either the chip canal areas here or break lines along steep shorelines in the Sturgeon Bay and Door County areas, lead core is perfect for keeping bait in that strike zone. We got them coming in closer to the boat. And like we said, lead core is kind of one of those one of those setups that catches everything. You know, I mean anything that's gonna patrol or, or roam along break lines here, which is basically every predatory fish up here in the Door County area this time of the year is going to hit these big crankbaits trolled on lead core. It's coming up now. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Oh, it's a nice big smallie. Yeah. And that's kind of a bonus fish. You know, we're actually after pike today. And I'm going to actually put a net on this fish. Even with smallmouth, sometimes it's a little bit safer to put a net on them when they got these big baits in their mouth. There we go. Getting to be that time of the year where these smallies will hit big presentations. And that's a nice big smallmouth. I mean, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you come out here looking for pike, walleyes, whatever else you're out here, but these smallmouths can definitely add a little fun and excitement to any day of fishing. And basically this flat wrap, I mean, this is a big bait for a smallmouth, but it shows you that a lot of times we underestimate what some of these big fish will hit. Bait like that, never too big for big smallmouth like this. And of course, pike, walleyes, muskies, they all lead it up too. So let's get this guy back in the water. Pretty cool deal. You know, guys, if you're going to come up here and try this fishing yourselves, and as you can see by the action we're having tonight, it's definitely something you should consider doing. Uh, bait choice is going to be probably the first thing that you're going to consider. Uh, when you decide what to do when you get out here on the water and you know we get asked a lot what's our favorite colors what's our favorite baits and to be honest with you color sometimes is a night to night thing especially when you're fishing after dark like we are this time of the year uh, overall we like darker pattern colors as you can see here um, classic example of a couple of this is a reef runner here uh, this is a lights out color it's called it's a darker purple black a lot of times after dark anything with that purple a pink you know contrasted with a darker color that sometimes is your best choice a couple other you know a couple other examples here this is another lights out color it's just a different variation of that color a little more pink in it than purple 
but as you'll see, a lot of the baits that we use this time of the year have a contrast to them, as I call them. They might have a purple or a pink, but like this is a blueberry muffin color. Um, it'll have a, you know, it has a chartreuse belly. Uh, even some of our husky jerks that we'll troll. This is a custom painted one by JT Tackle. Uh, purple, black bars, you know, again, contrasting with the chartreuse. These are the key things at night. A lot of times it seems that the baits that contrast compared to a solid colored bait, uh, they seem to be the ticket. And when it comes to what type of baits, we really prefer anything with that longer, thinner profile. If you're used to trolling down in the lower bay, you know, you're used to trolling flicker shad, shad wraps, those type of things because of the predominant bait population down there being gizzard shads. You get up here into this area, you're looking at a lot of AOIs, some smelt, spot tail shiners, all of those fish, all those bait fish to these walleyes up here, they have a longer, narrower profile. So get yourself some deep diving husky jerks, get yourself some shallow and deep running reef runners, get some contrasting colors, purple, pinks, you're gonna put a lot of these walleyes in the boat when you're out at night. Tonight's one of those nights where the fish, we're catching more fish going into the wind and into the wind-driven currents, which is a little unusual, but not uncommon completely. And it's something you gotta keep in mind. You know, sometimes it's nice if the bite's going downwind well, sometimes we'll just pick up and run back up and then troll back with them. But in the beginning of the night, you really gotta take Take time to make one pass into the wind because this is a classic example. Go we'll grab the net here. This is an example of a night where the fish really want the baits coming into the current or into the wind driven current at least. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's another nice fish. There we go. Just a nice fish right there. Oh, there we go. He popped off and you can see that's on one of those colors we talked about, one of those custom colors uh, that we talked about earlier in the show. And right here, a classic example of just a nice average sized Door County Sturgeon Bay walleye here in the summer months. You can catch piles of these. And if you like what you see, if you're interested in doing this, now's the time to get up here to Sturgeon Bay and take advantage of this fishery. All of August, even into September, these fish are gonna be out on these reefs. Night bite's gonna be going great, and it's gonna be a fun time if you get up here and get out here to chase these. If you guys are gonna spend any time chasing walleyes in the lower bay this fall, there's one key thing to keep in mind, and that's location. A lot of the areas that held fish in that May through mid, late June period, they're gonna hold a lot of fish this time of the year as well. Some of those fish leave those areas in that mid to late August period. Water gets too warm. They'll move up the north to the shorelines, up to the north a ways, or they'll move out to the west shore into that deeper water, a little bit cooler areas. But as the water cools in the fall and the gizzard shad really start to pile up on the lower bay, those walleyes will follow them right down to that shallow structure. If you're gonna look at those areas this time of the year, don't get too hung up on locations. Everyone knows the popular spots and the popular reef structures, but there's lots of areas down there that produce and hold a lot of fish. Get your Navionics chips out, spend some time working on your chart plotters, and you're going to find areas that aren't as heavily fished that hold lots of nice walleyes as well. When you find those structures, there's a, basically a few ways to approach them. We like to start by isolating and locating the high spots on there, be them three to five foot top areas. Look at those spots first and make a shallow pass right along the edges of that structure. If those don't produce, we'll tend to move a little bit deeper off towards the deeper edges and troll that 10 to 15 foot areas. If those two don't produce, and here you have to use a little caution, but we'll put the boat into the shallowest areas and troll right over the tops of those reefs, especially if there's some wind on the structure. A lot of times that's where you'll find your most fish and even sometimes the biggest fish right during the middle of the day. So guys, don't hesitate to try the lower bay this fall. Get on out there, check those structures, spend some time with your charts, find some new areas, and you're gonna have a lot of fun on the lower bay this fall. All right, guys, well, we got this one on the outside board here, and it seems like a pretty good fish. Again, no secret spots down here in the lower bay. People know where to go. People know which structures hold fish. For the most part, if you caught fish there in the early part of the season, you're probably gonna catch them here in this mid, well, let's just say this early fall period, late summer period. And, uh, you know, things are pretty much gonna be the same. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, yeah not a bad little fish. And when they come in the numbers that they do down here, it actually makes the fishing pretty fun. I mean, everyone likes to go catch those big trophies up north, so do we. Every once in a while, it's kind of nice to get down here and uh, 
just put a bunch of fish in the boat, lots of bites, doubles. Uh, that always makes it kind of fun. There we go. Yeah, just another beautiful lower bay walleye right here. There he is, guys, a nice fish. Classic lower bay fish, good eating size fish, like we said before, if you want to keep a couple. We're letting most of them go today. So we'll get this guy back in the water. We'll get lines back in. We're gonna finish up this pass and uh, hopefully put a few more fish in the boat. All right, guys, well, we got another one on here and the conditions are starting to get a little tougher for boat control here as we got a pretty good south wind picking up. Um, and we got a pretty nice fish on here. I don't know what for sure. You always got a chance to have a little bit of a mixed bag down here, which is kind of cool. There we go. Now oh, that's a beautiful fish anyway. Look at the size of that. Oh, that's a beautiful fish, guys. It's a nice example of a lower bay walleye. Beautiful fish. Lots of these to be caught this time of the year. Don't forget about this fall period on the lower bay. You want to put some fish like this in the boat. Lots of action, lots of bites. We all know about the big trophy bite up in the Sturgeon Bay area and up to the north. But don't forget about the lower bay this time of the year. If you're looking for a few fish to eat for dinner once in a while, this is the place to come and get some eater fish. And you're also gonna get some nice fish like this one right here. So thanks again for watching everybody and be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Fish Door County TV.